everyone. In this tutorial I will be showing you how to make this absolutely gorgeous 3D daisy granny square. So you can see the center of the square is made up of popcorn stitches so it's really textured and very 3D and then I've added a back post border as well to make the green really stand out on that final round and it creates a really lovely ridge as well to your work so you can see it creates a lovely ridge there as well that is a completely optional part of this pattern if you just wanted to end with an ordinary round of granny squares obviously you absolutely can do but I just wanted to give it a 3d effect to the edge as well as the center so let's jump straight into this one and get started so you can use obviously any yarn weight and colours that you wish. I'm just going to be using these nice spring colours and I'm going to start with my yellow for the centre. So my yarn recommends a 4mm hook so that is what I will be using. So you want to start with your slip knot and as always if you're not sure how to do that then just nip and check out my beginner series. So we're going to start with a chain of four. So one, two, three and four and then we're going to make this into a little circle so we're going to pop our hook through that very first stitch and then we're going to slip stitch so we're going to yarn over and pull through both of the loops on your hook and that will give you a little circle to work our next stitches into. So we're now going to chain three and this is going to count as our first treble. Now this is UK treble in the US this is your double. So our chain three counts as a treble and then we're now going to do a chain one because we're going to have a chain one in between all of our trebles. So now back into this center circle we're going to do a treble so yarn over insert into your center yarn over and pull up and you'll have three loops yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two so that is our first proper treble but obviously this chain three counts as one as well chain one and back into the center circle you're going to do another treble so yarn over and insert yarn over and pull up pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, chain one again and treble. So we want to have eight trebles and that will include the chain three. So we've got the chain three, so that's one, two, three, four. So we want four more and always with a chain one in between. So if you want to skip ahead then you can do that now otherwise you can stick with me and we will just complete these final few stitches five chain one six chain one seven chain one and eight but always make sure that you do your final chain one before you connect to where we started. So you want to, obviously it's a chain four that we've got here, but that fourth chain is the chain in between the trebles. So you want to find your third chain. So one, two, and then this is my third chain just here. So you want to insert your hook into that third chain and slip stitch to join. So yarn over and pull through both. So that is our centre for the flower completed. So I'm going to do a chain one and snip off and pull that out. So that now is our centre circle. At this point you might find it easier to weave in your ends so that they don't get tangled up in your way. And I'm now going to move on to my next colour. And you're going to attach your colour at any point on your circle but make sure it is in one of the chain one spaces so you can pick whichever one you like and I always tie my yarn so 
So I've connected my new yarn and we're now going to be doing a round of popcorn stitches. So obviously I will do the first few with you so that you've got the hang of it. This first one is different because we are starting with a chain three rather than a, a proper treble. So chain three and that is going to count as one treble. So we want five trebles all in this same stitch. So that chain three counts as one into the same stitch space even. You're going to do another treble, so that's two, three, four, and five. And that's all into that same chain one space. What you now want to do is lift your hook out slightly and just pop your finger through that loop so that you don't lose your stitch. And like I say, this first one's a little bit trickier because it's a chain three instead of a, a proper treble. But you want to find that third stitch from the bottom. So one, two, and this is my third stitch just here. And you're going to pop your hook through the t that third chain and then you're going to put your hook back through the loop and just hold it for a second while you tighten up that chain and then you're going to grab that yarn and pull it through and then you're going to do a chain one and that is how you create a popcorn so that chain one will never count as a stitch it is you need to count it as part of the popcorn itself. You then go into chain one and we're ready to move on to our next popcorn stitch which is going to go in this next chain one space. So five trebles all into this same space. One, two, three, four and five and again pull up your loop pop your finger through so you want to find the top of the very first treble which is this stitch just here so you're going to pop your hook through the top of that first treble and then back through the loop for your yarn and tighten up and then you will pull that stitch through to create your little popcorn and do that chain one which counts again as your popcorn. Chain one and then you're going to move on to another popcorn stitch into the next chain one space. So five trebles, one, two, three, four, and five. And again, take your hook out and insert your hook into the top of that first treble for this petal. So into the top of that stitch and then back through your working loop and pull that tight and then pull that stitch through. Chain one which is part of your popcorn and then chain another and you're going to continue to do that all the way around so if you want to pause or rewind do that now and I will meet you as you complete your final popcorn stitch. I'm just getting back to where we started from. I have completed my final popcorn stitch and done my chain one, which counts as part of your popcorn. And then I need to do my other chain one and then we are ready to join this round. So you want to find, it can be a little bit fiddly this bit, but where we did that chain three at the beginning, again, you want to find that third chain which will have the slip stitch going through it. So it'll be at the top of this chain three and it's this stitch just here. 
and you're going to pop your hook into that stitch and slip stitch. Chain one and snip off. And then pull that out. So this is how you should be looking so far. It may look a little untidy with all your ends if you're like me and you haven't sewn them in yet. But now is a good time to stop and just sew in these ends, which I will do now. And then we will move on to the square. So there we are, I have sewn in my ends and this is how my little flower is looking. So obviously it's all puffed up and you have like um, a ring around the back. But that is how you should be looking. So we're now going to move on to turning it into a square. So the chain spaces that you should have in between your petals, that is where you want to attach your yarn. So into one of those chain spaces. And again, I'm just going to tie mine on. And so these are all going to be treble stitches. So UK treble, US double. But to start with, you want to do a chain three. And then this is much like an ordinary granny square. Now you're going to do two more trebles. So you've got a cluster of three trebles next to each other. And you're working these all in that same space. So that is our first cluster of three. We then want to create a corner so we're going to chain two and back into that very same space you're going to do three more trebles in that same space. One, two and three. So that has created our first corner. We're then going to skip across the top of this first petal and we're going to work three trebles into this next chain space. So in between your next two petals, you'll do one, two and three. So we've now got a corner and one set of trebles and we are going to create another corner now. So into this next chain space here you're going to do your corner. So three trebles, one, two and three. So we're going to create the corner so you need to chain two and then back into that same space three more trebles. So one two and three. So that is our new corner created. Jump across into your next chain space and do your three trebles. One, two and three and then again into your next chain space you're going to create a corner. So your next one along I'm going to do your three trebles, two, oops, and three, chain two to create your new corner and back into that same space, three more trebles, so one, two, and three and we're nearly back round now so into your next space you're going to do your three trebles and then you're going to create your final corner into the next chain space so your three trebles chain two and three trebles all in that same space. Two and one final treble in there. And then we just have our final space to work into here where we will just do our three trebles. So one, two 
and three. So we've worked all the way round now and we have started to turn this into a square and we're just going to join at the top of that chain three with a slip stitch. So find the top of your chain three and slip stitch. So I'm just going to pull this out for a second so you can see how you should be looking. And that is how you should be looking now. Obviously if you wanted really tiny squares then you could finish here if you wanted to but I'm obviously going to move up to my next round. I'm going to chain three and that is going to count as my final treble for that chain space there when I get back round to it but I'm going to jump across now straight into my corner space where I will create a new corner. So it will be my three trebles, chain two, three trebles, so one, two and three and again chain two and three trebles, one, two and three and then we're going to go into the space in between our sets of three trebles here so you should have a space just behind where your petal is and you will do your three trebles into that space and again you'll skip your three trebles and move into the next space between your trebles behind the next petal and complete your three trebles and then you should be at your corner space again. So you're going to create a new corner by doing your three trebles, chain two and three trebles all in the same space. Chain two, three trebles, one, two, and three. And then just as the same as the other side you will go into the space between your clusters of trebles and do three trebles. So if you want to continue that all the way around and I will meet you in just a second and we will finish off this round together and then talk about the next one. So I'm pretty much back round where we started from where we did this chain three and so I need to do two more trebles into this chain space. So one and two and then we just need to find the top of the chain three which is just here and slip stitch. So I'll take that out again now. So this is now how your little square should be looking and it looks absolutely beautiful. I really do love this pattern because it's got such a lovely 3D texture to it as well. It's such a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern. So again, you can stop here if you wanted to. However, I am going to do another round of green and then I'm going to do a small border with the white. So if you want to stick with me and we will complete the next couple of rounds together. So chain three again and then you're going to do two more trebles into this little chain space. Well, it's not actually a chain space, but into the obvious space between your trebles. And then that is your three trebles together. Again, create your new corner. So your three trebles, chain two, and three trebles all in the same space to create your corner. And then again you're going to work your sets of three trebles into each of these spaces. One, two, oops, 
and three. So you'll just continue that all the way around and then we will finish off and do our final round together. So I've just done my final set of three trebles and I'm ready to join to the top of that chain three again with a slip stitch. Do a little chain one if you're finishing here. Obviously you can do as many or as few rounds of the stitches as you like, but I am going to finish here after three rounds of the green. So this is how my square looks. So we're now going to do the joining border. So as I say, it's just to create an edge that is going to be the same colour as what I want to use to join. So I want to have a white edge around these squares, but obviously you can just leave it here if you wanted to. And I am going to do a round of back post treble crochet. So that's UK treble. And so I'm going to start with a standing back post treble crochet. You can, if you wanted to, just chain three up but I just find that this particular way works best for me. So I've got my slip knot on my hook already and you want to yarn over as if you were starting a treble and then just pop your finger on to hold both of those stitches but try and make sure that the stitches are quite close together and quite near the end of your hook. I'm then going to pick up my work and I'm going to do a back post. So I'm going to come around the, from the back of this treble here, I'm coming up through the back of my work, I'm going in front of that treble and then back out the other side. So I'm pushing that treble to the back. I'm going to grab my yarn and pull it through. I've now got three loops on my hook and you need to hold them quite tight and you're just going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And that is your first stitch. So it's a standing treble, back post treble crochet. So you've done your first one. You're now going to move on to the next one and this one will be a bit easier because you're not holding those stitches. So yarn over, come through the back of your work go in front of the treble and back out the other side. Again, you're pushing that stitch to the back, yarn over and pull up and complete your treble as normal. And the next one, yarn over, insert from the back and go in front of that treble and back out the other side, yarn over and pull up and complete your treble. And so it adds a border but it also pushes these green stitches up which will create a beautiful texture around. So again, round the next one, yarn over and then go behind, come from behind and go in over the front to push that treble to the back and then complete your treble. And again, yarn over, come from behind the treble and back out the other side and complete. And again. And so you're going to continue this all the way to your corner and then we will do the corner together. So just take your time with these stitches. If you're not familiar with them, just really take your time. And as I say, this is a completely optional part of the, the square. You can obviously just do another round of the granny stitches. So I'm nearly at my corner now. Just got one more stitch to work around. And so it's just the same as before, when you get to your corner space, you will work around your trebles, chain two, and then continue working around the next one. So it's the same as if you were doing the granny 
but obviously we're just doing back post trebles instead of ordinary trebles. As I say, it's completely up to you whether you choose to do these stitches. But if you want to continue it all the way around if you're doing it and I will see you in a minute to show you how to close off. So I've completed my final back post treble around this stitch here and then to finish off you simply want to insert your hook through the top of that very first back post treble that you did. It should have your slip knot at the top attached to it as well so it should be very easy to spot You'll insert your hook into that stitch and slip stitch. Do a little chain one to finish off. And then pull your yarn out. So I've got a few ends obviously to sew in now, but that is it for this particular pattern. I really hope that you like the 3D effect that you get with this granny square. And I can only imagine how beautiful it would look if you had loads and loads of them all joined up together in a beautiful blanket. But that is it for this one everybody, I really hope that you've enjoyed it and I will leave a link in the description box for how to attach your granny squares together. It is obviously just one method, there are hundreds of methods I'm sure of how to do that but I will see you for another one very soon. And please also come and find me on Instagram if you haven't done so already because I really do love it when you share pictures of your work with me. It's really nice to see that people use the tutorials and create really beautiful things. So I will leave a link for that down in the description as well. But thanks as always for watching and do please remember to like and subscribe and I will see you again soon. Bye!